A very warm welcome to all of you to another lecture on this course on simulation of communication systems using MATLAB. And uh, in the last lecture we had talked about uh, principal component analysis for image compression and uh, we had seen how principal component analysis helps us in uh, compressing images. Now in this lecture we will talk about uh, further details on image compression. We will uh, see why principal component analysis or what is known as the KL transform is not used. So one thing while doing uh, principal component analysis based image compression one thing that is vital is that we need the image covariance matrix and the corresponding eigenvectors to compress or decompress an image. So we have seen that uh, we need both the covariance matrix of the image as well as its eigenvectors to compress and decompress an image. So we need to store this as well and uh, that would naturally mean more overhead or more storage overhead because we need to store the covariance matrix as well. So the question then becomes is that can we do anything better? The answer naturally is yes that we can do something better and uh, what we realize is that uh, images like uh, most other practical signals are low pass or uh, most of the energy or most of the entropy of images is concentrated in lower frequency bands. So this leads to what is known as some sub band coding or transform domain compression. So what we observe is that so for transform domain coding actually why do we need to say that what we observe we can go to the image. and open the image, convert again so I created BG again and this is a grayscale image now let me so image is real valued Let me take its two dimensional Fourier transform DFT. Let me take its two dimensional Fourier transform and see what do I get. So, let me also define the two dimensional Fourier transform by I am at it. So, of image as x k l equals summation k goes from sorry m goes from 0 to m minus 1 n goes from 0 to the images this this is the two dimensional DFT of an image and similarly we can also define can also define the 2D DCT or discrete cosine transform of an image. Uh, so the discrete cosine transform of an image is basically defined as x k l equals summation m goes from 0 to m minus 1 n goes from 0 to m minus 1. 
x m n cos m k by m cos two pi cos two pi n l by n and this is the 2D DCT and the advantage of a DCT over DFT is that DCT only returns real values, DCT only returns real values that is the major advantage of DCT. So, now let us say B equals DCT 2 of BG and um, so this so this gives me a 512 by 512 represent DCT of the image. So uh, interpretation of a two dimensional transform because so let us also try to interpret the two dimensional transform while we are doing this. So the KLth xkl corresponds to the contribution of the klth 2d spatial frequency component in the image xkl corresponds to the contribution of KLth to the component in the image. To have a better idea, let us plot, but these are both positive and negative. So, we have to be, so one thing is that uh, these are of the order of 10 to power 3 and uh, others are very small and these are both positive and negative. So, one we will have to talk about the magnitudes. So, while talking about the contribution of the spatial frequencies one have to talk about the magnitudes and we in trying to visualize this let us say that we use the IMSC command the scaled image command. So, IMSC absolute value of B. So, I want to visualize the scaled sorry uh, image SC not IMSC scaled image. So, everything is blue because so yes this is better. So, actually this gives us a better idea. Now, if we look at this no, legend, I will plot a heat map. So, this is between minus 8 and 10 and this is in the log scales. So, this is 10 to minus 8 and uh, this is uh, close to 10 to power 10 or this is actually one more thing is not log log 10 because that is e to power minus 8 and e to power 10. So, let us plot this now. So, this is 10 to power minus 3 to 10 to power something close to 10 to power 4. So, we see that uh, most of the entries of the image are uh, of lower orders of magnitude which is 10 to power minus 2 or 10 to power minus 3 and uh, a few entries corresponding to the upper left corner. So, entries corresponding to the upper left corner are very large of the order of 10 to power 3 or 10 to power 4 and then you go as you go deeper into the image the quantities become smaller. So, let us say see these entries around the 60th column out of 512 columns the entries become of the order of 10 to power 1 or 10 to power 2 whereas around the edges these entries are of the order of 10 to power 3 or even 10 to power 4 and the diagonal entry is way more 
as compared to the non diagonal entries of diagonal entries that is so if i look at 33 by 33 this is just 102 which is two orders of magnitude below 11 or the first entry so what we observe is that uh, the contribution so what we observe here is that the contribution of the smaller spatial frequencies is much larger than the that of the larger spatial frequencies so the contribution of smaller spatial frequencies is much larger than that of the larger spatial frequencies so we can repeat our trick from principal component analysis here that is we can uh, try to reconstruct the image using just the higher spatial frequencies so here i because that is time consuming so and uh, it follows a similar logic to what we have done earlier i won't repeat that but what i'll do instead i'll show you so this is the original image this is this corresponds to l equals 2 or two largest within a block of naturally this is within a block of 8 by 8 uh, and uh, actually what i can do is instead of looking at the entire image we can possibly look at smaller blocks within the image for dct as well so save as image this and but that won't uh, give me so but uh, that won't give me a faithful special representation of the image because now uh, if i try to reconstruct the individual blocks i won't get anything meaningful out of it because unlike correlation there isn't any proper structure so it's better if we so actually what i'll do is i'll give the details of this experiment and then so in the next experiment or what we have done here is we break the image into 8 by 8 blocks consider take the dct each block consider the just the largest L spatial frequency components and use those to reconstruct. and uh, we, we consider just the largest L spatial frequency components and use those to reconstruct the image and so the, this is so L equals original L equals 2 equals 4 6 sorry L equals 8 L equals 16 and L equals 32. So out of 64 when we use so this is the original so this is l equals 64 i can say so out of this is very bad this is also bad this is bad this is bad so even with 32 special components or even when i use half of the components i am still getting a lot of uh, pixelated artifacts in the image so even with the using half dct even with using 2d dct and using half the components for reconstructing the image i am still getting too much pixelation or uh, too many artifacts so in using uh, transform domain compression we can uh, not expect to use or uh, we cannot 
actually think of using simply dropping off higher frequencies, but what we can do instead is that uh, we see that smaller frequencies or smaller spatial frequencies have larger variances. So, we quantize them using larger number of bits and smaller spatial frequencies have smaller variances. So, we quantize them using smaller number of bits. So, naturally quantization using a larger number. Of, so, this idea of uh, using uh, quantizing smaller frequencies with larger variances using a larger number of quantization levels and or this idea of quantizing different frequency bands using different numbers of bits is known as sub band coding and uh, this is one idea that is useful in JPEG compression. So, JPEG compression is transform this image block quantization entropy coding. So, this is the JPEG compression format you can possibly look at it here and this is the a block diagram of the JPEG compression format. We would not obviously uh, we would not code this here that will take too much time, but uh, those interested can look up the JPEG standard and similarly there is the MP3 or the MPEG3 standard. Again you can possibly do this as a self project, you can look at this link and try to implement the MP3 standard and uh, with that we close this chapter. There is only one thing that is left and that is wavelets and YouTube resolution. So, wavelets and YouTube resolution actually requires uh, more time than we have left in this lecture. So, we will have another short lecture that will talk about uh, the idea of wavelets, wavelets and uh, the idea of image pyramids and how you get multiple different resolutions on YouTube or how images were loaded in the earlier days of the internet. So, that is uh, something or when you have a low bandwidth how do you supplement more and more information into the images uh, that uh, we will cover in a separate lecture. So, that is all for today. Thank you. Thank you.